how to create lower thirds from scratch is creating our text. I'm going to add a bit of animation so you can see we've created a keyframe and changed the interpolation to Bezier. So at the moment, this is what we've got. We've now got the blue background. It doesn't take too much time and I'll be providing you with a template for this one I've just created. Just before we get into this video, if you would like to request a tutorial, let me know in the comments below. And if this tutorial helps you, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create lower thirds from scratch in Premiere Pro. So here we are in Premiere Pro, we're starting completely from scratch. First thing we're going to do, come to the bottom left here, and all we're going to be doing is adding a color mat. Now this is going to be the background, it's not a color you need to worry about. However, if you do have an image that you prefer to use, by all means use that as well. Now I'm just going to pick any color, so I'm going to put pink for example, and I'm going to select OK. I'm just going to drag and drop this onto our timeline. Again, this is the background, it's not a color we need to worry about, it's not going to be there once we finally finish. So the next step we're going to be doing is creating our text. So come to the type tool here and just draw out a box and this is where you can type in the text that you want on the overlay. So this is what I've done. I'm going to be changing it up so obviously it's all capitalized and what we're going to be doing, this isn't going to be the main text which is basically the social media platform we're talking about. So I'm going to be using the font, I'm not sure on the name, I just know it, there we go, it's called Novus. I'm going to be using Novus Lite for the top part of the font and I'm also going to be sizing this down to about 65. Now in addition to that, I'm also going to spread out the text by coming to this button over here, left click and dragging it to the right. There we go. And I'm just going to press Ctrl A and centralize everything. Now for the text underneath, I'm also going to be using the same font. However, this time I'm going to be using the bold version. So as you can see, that's how this will look. I'm going to come to the move tool and simply just position everything to the center. Now lower third, it's basically in the lower third part of the video. So it doesn't have to be on the left. It's most commonly used on the left. For some people, it may be good to use it on the right. So just pick whichever place you would like to use it. There's no right, there's no wrong. Now the next step is we're going to add a bit of animation. Now it does take a bit more time, but it, overall it just makes it look a lot better. Now by all means, you can completely be done with it at that, but it is boring. So what we're going to be doing again, coming over to new item, we're going to be adding a color mat and just select OK. This one is going to be an important color. It's basically going to be a bar which goes across and reveals the text. So I'm going to choose white. I'm going to select OK. I'll just call this line just so we know what it is. I'm going to drag and drop this onto video track three. Now click on it, head over to effect controls. You want to uncheck uniform scale. Now for this, the height, you just want to drag that down. And for the width, drag that in as well. Now what I'm going to do is actually rotate it as well, so you can see there's rotation. I'm going to put it complete, just type in 90. And I'm going to select the motion button over here, and I'm simply just going to left click and drag this to the end right here. So if you haven't got what we're actually going to make the animation happen, this line is going to actually start on the left side. It's going to come across and reveal the text. Pretty simple. And then we'll also make this line close out the text as well. So it'll make more sense as we do it. So the first thing we need to do is reposition the line to the correct side. And all we need to do for that, head on to the position side. And here on the left side of the text, just simply drag it to the left. Again, so it's completely off screen like this. Now, once you're here, what you wanna do is toggle the animation on position. So you can see we've created a keyframe and you wanna drag this to the beginning. Now from here, you choose how long you want it to take for the text to appear. My personal preference is 30 keyframes. So you can see it says 30 here. And all I'm going to be doing is dragging the left number to the right until it hits the end of the text right here. So now essentially what we've done is animated this. Now I'm also going to be right clicking and highlighting the keyframes. And I'm going to right click and change the interpolation to Bezier. So just play it through. It just makes it a bit more smoother. Now, as for the text, what we need to do is mask this in. So it's very simple. All you need to do is get the rectangle tool because our text is obviously set out in a rectangle. You can just drag it over and then of course extend it out so it matches your text size. And all we're gonna be doing is first of all toggling the animation on mask path. 
Then what we're going to be doing is selecting the mask and simply we're going to drag it to the left. So this is how it will start just like the line as well. And we'll come across on our timeline. Remember it's at 30, the whole text will be revealed. So I'm going to drag the whole text across. Now it may not be synced straight away. That's okay. It's a starting point. This is where we'll be fixing it. So just play it back. As you can see, it actually turned out perfect. So of course this is at 30 keyframes, so it takes 30, 30 keyframes for that to happen. You then choose how long do you want the text to stay on screen. I would recommend say a second, maybe one second and 30 keyframes. For example, go up to two seconds, which would be here. And all we're going to be doing, we'll start off with the line again. So left click on the line tab and all you're going to do where it says position, you're going to select the keyframe button. So it adds a keyframe. And then what you're going to be doing is coming across on your timeline by 30 keyframes again. And then we're going to drag the left position back to the left. So it goes off screen. Then we're going to go back over to the text and we're basically going to do the same thing again. So you can line it up. We know this part here where we are now is at the end of the transition. So we're going to add a marker here. We're then going to come back on our timeline here. So this is where the other keyframe is for the line. This is where it begins. So we can add a keyframe or we can add a, a marker here as well. So going back to the text, it's made everything simpler for us. We've got the markers here. All we need to do, first of all, on the mask path is simply select add or remove keyframes. And at the end of the mask, all we need to do here, again, select the mask and drag this off to the left. So if we play it through, it wipes in and simply wipes out. Now, I don't like the way it wiped out. And the reason for that, you can see it wipes out too quickly before the line even starts. So all we're going to be doing is delaying that a little bit. Just get the keyframes here, drag them across a couple of keyframes and we'll just recheck it. So I think there should work. I'll play it again. And there we go. We're almost done. There's one last thing we can actually do to improve this. Remember, the pink is just a background. It's not anything to do with the actual lower third. This is just so we can see the text. So therefore, now we can add a background color to this actual text. Now, I'm just going to drag and drop on this wallpaper. So this will be our background now. I'm going to drag everything up one track and I'm going to move this here. So this is what we've got. Imagine this is just a standard background. As you can see, we've got white text on a white background. Now, you don't know what you're going to be filming. It's probably going to be a different color background every time. So this is where we need to add a backdrop to the text as well. So head back to the line and all we're going to be doing is coming over to the first uh, keyframe animation here and we're simply going to be adding a marker. Come across to the second one, which is here, and add another marker. So these are basically the position here is where it's going to stay still. And this is where we're going to add a background. So you can use the color map we used earlier and by all means you can use any color you want to. All you need to do to change it is double click it and let's go for example a nice light blue select OK and that's changed. Now what we need to do is uncheck uniform scale and again size it all down so it matches what we actually have. So I'm just going to use the position and I'll position this over our text here. So at the moment this is what we've got. We now got the blue background and obviously with the normal text we just created. So we're going to animate the blue background as well, make it really simple. So you'll see this now. So first of all, I don't want the blue background to be there straight away. I'm going to start this at 15 keyframes. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to go to the end marker here and I'm going to go back 15 keyframes. And I'm simply going to trim this down to the marker here. So we're going to do some quick animation here again. All we're going to be doing is toggle the animation on position. And we're going to drag this left one off to the left so it's off screen. We're going to come to the first marker and we're going to drag that all the way back on like this. We're then going to left click, press control C, press control V further up here. So at 145, we're going to drag this keyframe to there. And then the very end keyframe, all we're going to be doing is dragging that back out to the left. So the text comes on first, the backdrop follows on after, the backdrop then flies off and then the text follows as well. It's just unusual, it's different, there's no right, there's no wrong way, you can be as creative as you'd like to. So just playing it through, that's what I've just created. Now, 
that took 20 minutes. It was fairly quick. Remember, if I wasn't recording, it'd probably be quicker. But you can see it doesn't take too much time. Now you can see here the white bar at the end doesn't get covered by the blue, so I will be fixing that as well. And I'll be providing you with a template for this one I've just created. So a link to it will be in the description for you to download for free. Now as always, if you need any guidance, if you need any assistance, you want to request a tutorial, just let me know in the comments below or ask me on my social media.